The Maldives is one of the wonders of the world. Located in the Indian Ocean and made of 1192 coral islands, it is also the world's lowest line country. The highest natural point is just 2.4 meters above sea level. Nearly half of its population lives in Mali the capital of the islands in less than 1.4 square kilometers. The rest is spread over 186 small scattered islands. Maldivians have lived for centuries from coconuts and fishing. There are no rivers or streams on any of the islands, except for Mali and a handful of other islands. Most islands rely on rain for drinking water. Today, one of the main problems for Maldivians is water, and it is likely to get worse with climate change. While northern islands face drinking water shortages during the dry season, from April to May, most southern islands face a different problem, flooding. Islands affected by floods and shortages of portable water receive relief from the capital island, Malé. Transportation costs are high with the Maldives scattered geography. This makes emergency relief very expensive for a government already struggling economically. Climate change is expected to bring stronger storms and longer periods without rainfall. The weather is becoming more and more unpredictable with heavy rains or longer dry season. A rise in the ocean's temperature and acidification has had devastating effects on coral reefs, affecting tourism and fisheries, both critical to the livelihoods of most Maldivians. Damaged reefs also function less effectively as a first line of defense against sea swells and flooding. Until the 90s, Maldivians used groundwater for drinking, but over the past decade, the groundwater of most islands got contaminated. The freshwater lenses of most islands was badly affected by the tsunami of 2004 and poorly planned urbanization. Groundwater is no longer uh, fit for uh, portable needs uh, due to urbanization and increasing population and uh, absence of proper sanitation on the islands, which ultimately contaminates the, uh, the groundwater lens. As a result, today, rainwater, together with water produced using desalination and expensive bottled water, are the only portable water options. In the past 10 years, the National Disasters Management Center in Mali had to send emergency shipments of water to about half of the 186 inhabited islands during the dry season. An expensive solution that sometimes can take up to two weeks to arrive. 
Despite the heavy rain, communities are not prepared to store enough rainwater. And in the past 10 years, we have attended to um, scarcity of water on average about 70 to 80 islands annually. Most households have one tank of 2,500 liters and fill it by collecting rain from their roofs. Bigger families might even have two or three tanks, since one is not enough for them to make it through the dry season. When water supply ends, households cope by borrowing from neighbors, by buying bottled water, or by receiving water relief from Mali. The United Nations Development Program is supporting the government of the Maldives to ensure that most vulnerable islands have year-round access to portable water and that they can cope with floods on their own. UNDP has supported three islands to set up pilot integrated water resources management systems. These systems make use of solar energy to desalinate seawater and combine it with rainwater collected from the island's public roofs to lower the costs of operations. The systems optimize means to collect, store and distribute water and to refill the island's groundwater lenses. So far, three desalination plants have been built in the islands with large populations. The water is piped to all households where a meter measures the family's consumption. Ahmad Musa lives with his 30 members family in Mahi Baru Island, the capital of Alif Dalatol, where a solar desalination plant has been built. Except for Mali, Maldivians never had to pay for water. Changing behaviors will require time and targeted campaigns. More work needs to be done to convince households to pay for desalinated water. Because desalination plants are expensive on islands with less than 1,500 inhabitants, the government is increasing the capacity to store rainwater, setting community water tanks. With heavy rain, community water tanks with a capacity of 100,000 liters, such as the ones installed on the island of Mahava, can fill in 20 minutes and are enough to survive over three rainless months. The water is filtered accessible to people with special needs, and tanks are cleaned regularly. Right now, most islands collect and store water in tanks with no filter or quality check. Roofs might be dirty from animal feces and unsafe for drinking. I'm not telling that rainwater itself is uh, bad, but the way which we collect and use is not safe. The Green Climate Fund a global fund that was set up under the United Nations to finance activities to adapt or mitigate climate change in developing countries is supporting the Maldives to diversify its sources of fresh water. It is funding the construction of four additional solar desalination plants in four islands and community rainwater tanks in 45 islands with smaller populations. This will provide 105,000 people with uninterrupted water access. At present, 21 islands, including Mali, have water supply network systems. However, not all make use of solar energy and systems to refill the groundwater. Our new project will provide water to over 30% of the whole population. To tackle flooding, the National Disaster Management Center have established flood response mechanisms, such as mobile water pumps, sand barriers, and improving response times to support flood-prone islands. We have now established 30 uh, flood, flood response mechanisms in, in 31 islands in different parts of the country. So, uh, mostly in southern, southern uh, islands.
Better relief mechanisms for flooding and water supply work by decentralizing relief responses to regional centers. Solar desalination plants built closer to communities will half the current costs of sending emergency water from the capital island of Mali. UNDP is conducting a cost-benefit analysis of the water sector in the Maldives to provide evidence and identify the best business models, policies, and interventions to supply affordable water to the islands. Water demand is expected to grow with a projected increase of 60% in the number of households by 2033. The next 20 years will be critical for the water sector in the Maldives. The centralizing the production of portable water and the capacity to cope with floods allows islands to be more self-sufficient and increase their capacity to deal with disasters.